Hi Bold Bakers! Marshmallows are not only easy to make at home, but they're really satisfying. Now we all know and love a traditional vanilla marshmallow, but why stop there? I am going to show you how you can make so many different flavors, including a birthday cake marshmallow. Now, as always, the recipe can be found on biggerbolderbaking.com and make sure you check out my website because I've got hundreds of other recipes there. Okay, let's get started. So into the bowl of your stand mixer, add in some hot water and then powdered gelatin. And then straight away, go in with the whisk and mix it all together. Now, if you're vegetarian, vegan, you don't like gelatin, you can always replace this with a vegan gel. And I'm gonna put that information on my website. Agar agar can give you different results, so I don't recommend using that. Okie dokie, we're gonna let this sit here for a few minutes and we're gonna get started in our saucepan. So add in your water, sugar, a pinch of salt, and then a very important ingredient is corn syrup. So now we're gonna turn the heat to a low heat and just let the sugar and the mix dissolve without letting it simmer yet. So now if you don't have corn syrup in your country, don't worry, you can use brown rice syrup, cane syrup, or even golden syrup, and that will work really well. So our next step is to clip on my candy thermometer. Now this is really important when making marshmallows and you do need one of these guys. Mine is Good Cook, really inexpensive, definitely get yourself one. Now all we're going to do is just let this mix come to a simmer over a medium low heat and let it very gently bubble away. You don't want rapid boiling, you just want a very gentle simmer away. So what you have to do now is hold your nerve and wait for this to reach soft ball stage on your thermometer, which is 240 degrees. So here's the deal. This step takes around 15 to 20 minutes. Now what you're not to do here is number one, stir it. Number two, crank up that heat. If you crank up the heat, you're gonna end up with caramel and you're gonna to have to start all over again. So just hold your nerve. Okay, so it takes some time, but we finally reached soft ball stage on the thermometer. So here's what we're gonna do. Turn off the heat. Very carefully remove your thermometer and then be very careful. Move it over to your mixer and then pour it into your mixer fitted with a whisk. If you need help for this step, then ask for it. Once all your mix is in there, turn on your machine to a medium high speed and let it whip for around 12 to 15 minutes. So our marshmallows have doubled in size. They look really good. They're almost done. So at this point, I'm going to add in a little bit of vanilla extract a little bit of almond extract, some red food coloring, some pink food coloring, and of course, sprinkles, because you can't have birthday cake without sprinkles. So while that's mixing, we're gonna prepare our tin. So here I have an eight by eight tin, seven by 11 also works really well. You want to grease this with some flavorless oil, like a vegetable oil, and then you're going to dust it with a bit of cornstarch and sugar mixed together. And this is really important because it helps your marshmallows to release out of the tin really easily. So once it's all mixed through, turn off your machine and then straight away get it into your tin. So you do want to work fast because the sugar starts to set. You can see this is a very messy job, but the thing about it is if you grease your spatula with a little bit of vegetable oil, it will actually help a lot to get the marshmallow out of there. Perfect, get as much out as you can. And then what you want to do is with a little bit of flavorless oil, again, on your fingertips, just go ahead and flatten down the top of the marshmallow to get it nice and even. The oil will stop it from sticking to your fingers. Then of course, I'm gonna add on a few more sprinkles on top. And then we're gonna sift over a little bit of that sugar and cornstarch mix that we did the tray with. The cornstarch in your sugar actually stops your marshmallows from getting wet, it keeps them nice and dry. If you're allergic to cornstarch, you can feel free to leave it out, but just note they might be a little bit stickier. So now at this point, we set this over to the side for a minimum of four hours, but usually I actually leave it overnight. And all this will do, we'll get a nice little bit of a skin on top of the marshmallows and make them ready for us to cut. So now what you want to do is just turn it out onto a surface and now we're gonna let this side get a little bit of a skin on it too for another three to four hours. So our marshmallows are no longer sticky to the touch, so now it is time to cut them. This is my favorite part. So now to make your life really easy when cutting these guys, dust your knife with a little bit of your cornstarch sugar mix. And then just go ahead and cut them as big or as small as you'd like. Once they're all cut up, you'll notice that they are still a little bit sticky. So what you want to do is toss them in a little bit more of the cornstarch sugar mix. And this just coats them and stops them from sticking together and keeps them nice and dry. Beautiful. Now come here to me. I know it seemed like a lot of work, but just check out this. How amazing is that? Look at all those sprinkles, it's super squishy. Exactly what you want from a marshmallow. 
So these marshmallows are so awesome, I couldn't just share one flavor with you. So if you go over to my website, I've got bonus recipes over there showing you how you can make an amazing chocolate marshmallow and even mint chocolate chip. I mean, seriously, they're squishy, soft, bubbly, and best of all, it tastes just like birthday cake. What more do you want from a marshmallow? I really hope you enjoyed this episode. Head over to my website to get those bonus recipes. And I'll see you back here really soon for more bigger, bolder baking.